Hi there. There, Kim, it's it's really great to be with you as we build up to our uh, webinar with the Joe Cox Foundation and the Connection Coalition on the 30th of July. Um, just want to hand over to you and if you could quickly introduce yourself. I will. Thank you very much indeed, George. Yeah, my name is Kim Ledbeater and I work as an ambassador for the Joe Cox Foundation. And I also chair a volunteer group um, here in West Yorkshire called More in Common, Batley and Spen. And I do both those things because Joe Cox, um, the MP who was murdered in June 2016, was my sister. That's really great. Well, as I say, thanks for sharing some time with us, um, particularly in these really bizarre times. We've been locked down for about four months now in various capacities. What impact do you think this lockdown has had on social isolation and loneliness? I think sadly it's had a huge impact. Um, I feel that the last few months there has been a real sense of loss across the country and indeed across the world to some degree and for many people that will sadly be the loss of loved ones um, who will be really dealing with grief but I think for all of us there has been a loss of our freedoms and there has been a loss of the really vital human connections that we all need and I think sadly because of that the impact on many people um, in terms of feeling lonely and feeling isolated has been has been quite quite huge to be fair and I think there's people who possibly had known loneliness before but I think then there's a whole new bunch of people who actually had never felt lonely and and this has created those feelings in a way that they'd never experienced so I think we're dealing with a problem that already existed for many people and now we're dealing with it with a problem that potentially exists for sadly a lot more of us. Yeah absolutely I would I would entirely agree um, at Breaking Barriers, we think that community engagement is really important. Hearing the voices of those who have been most affected um, is essential, we think. Um, and, and what we've seen is there have been some positive developments. And so I wonder whether you have any thoughts in how best, as we slowly but surely come out of lockdown, can we make sure that those positive innovations are maintained? Yeah, that's that's a really good point. And I think you're absolutely right. I think we have seen some brilliant ways in which people and organisations have stayed connected during these really difficult times. Um, I'm very proud of the work of the Joe Cox Foundation in that we adapted our work very quickly. And the Connection Coalition was a really important part of that. Um, there was a sense at the beginning of lockdown, and, and, and we talked about it um, as a team, where there was a lot of men on telly telling you what you couldn't do. And what there wasn't a lot of was, oh, my goodness me, how are we all going to get through? through this together how are we going to pull together and, and, and um, keep connected as a country um, so that's why the connection coalition was set up and I'm really pleased that we've got nearly 500 organizations now who've become a part of that so that is certainly something we are looking at continuing as we go forward in the coming months and years um, I'm also extremely proud of the way that so many groups across the country responded straight away to the acute needs of the crisis uh, we saw that locally here in, in Batley and Spen my team up here was straight away working with the council, working with the mutual aid groups that, that got set up to provide a conduit to tying up the resources with the need. And I think we've seen that in, in towns and cities and villages all over the country. Um, so that's really important that that work keeps going. I feel very passionately about cross-sector work. You know, and we have again seen the public sector working with the voluntary sector and, and the voluntary sector showing its ability to move quickly and to be very responsive without having to do too much box ticking and you know and form filling in and stuff so that's really important and I think we've also seen on, on many occasions local businesses step up and help out as well so that's something I think we really need to keep working on going forwards and then I suppose the third layer of that is the acts of compassion and kindness and neighbourliness that we've seen um, you know, I think we've all got stories in, in our communities about, you know, reaching out to neighbours, whether that's to deliver some baking or it's just to make sure they're OK. Or I was doing jigsaw swaps with one of my neighbours, you know, those little things that we have to be honest, a lot of us didn't do before. And they are actually really powerful. So there's lots of things I think, you know, we've seen that have been positive out of the most horrific of situations. And it is important that we work together to keep those things going. No, I think you're absolutely right. There has, has, has been um, a community spirit that has been energised, I think. Um, and how do you think this, this lockdown has impacted upon the general public awareness of social isolation and loneliness? 
I think it's absolutely raised um, the issue and the importance of, of addressing loneliness and social isolation. Again, partly because so many of us will have been experiencing those emotions that we that we haven't maybe felt before. I think also many organisations and groups such as yourselves are having really important conversations about this. I mean, for us as an organisation, you know, Joe's Foundation, we've had a, um, a four year relationship with the issue of loneliness and social isolation on the back of the work that Joe started um, in her short time in Parliament. And, and we were really pleased that in those early months, there was a huge amount of energy behind uh, getting some important changes made. So we ended up with the, the world's first ever Minister for Loneliness being appointed, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. And then we ended up with the world's first ever government strategy on loneliness. Um, so there was a lot going on then. And then keeping that momentum going is difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, sadly, out of this crisis, we have seen a real rise in the desire to keep that work going with lots and lots of organisations doing, doing more around it. And, you know, we've also got to start looking forward. I think it's fair to say we've got some tough months ahead. This is not an issue that's just going to go away. You know, winter is potentially going to be quite tough. It saddens me to say it, but we have to be honest about that. We have to look at loneliness and social isolation in terms of the broader picture around mental health. Um, as we go forward in, into the autumn and winter. So I think we've got a lot more awareness going on. We've also, as the, the headline today states, got more action. And now we just need to keep that action going forward. Exactly. Well, that is that's a brilliant answer and a, and a really nice segue into the event that we've got on the 30th of July. Um, we are beyond thrilled and absolutely honoured to have you speaking there. So excited about it. We think it'd be fantastic. Um, what are you most looking forward to? What excites you about the event? Oh, well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> um, I will just be one voice of many. And I, what I love is I love meeting new people. Joe was yeah. very much a people person. I am very much a people person. I love hearing stories about the amazing things that people are doing up and down the country. Um, and I think, you know, again, what I love about Joe's foundation is we have got a good link of connections with politicians and with high profile people and, and in Westminster but we've also got an amazing network on the ground in what I call the real world and grassroots people in, in places all over the country doing amazing things so every opportunity I get to meet those people I absolutely love it and then I think the opportunity for you know people in power and, and, and positions of influence to hear those stories and understand what is going on in the third sector um, and out there in communities I think is also really good so I'm really looking forward to um, to having a fantastic webinar and and thank you very much for the opportunity no no it, it it really is our thanks we we think it will be fantastic and it will be um helped by you being there we're absolutely certain uh kim thanks so much for your time um, a real thrill to speak with you thank you very much thank you